United States, and you know you're going to practice kicking the ball over and over again into the goal, even though you're you know very seldom going to just be standing there in front of the goal going, oh, kick the ball in. And of course, part of the point is to get in front of the goal and then know what to do with the ball when you have it. Similarly, playing scales on a musical instrument, you don't spend a lot of time playing scales on a musical instrument, but progressions of notes is definitely what it's all about. And if you don't know how to move from one note to another in a structured fashion with the musical instrument, it's um, you're going to sound like something out of a very, very, very bad punk rock song rather than a musician. So you, know, you have to learn these fundamentals. And, and the same is true of these uh, test design techniques, that you learn the fundamentals and then you uh, apply them in uh, creative ways uh, you, you basically uh, synthesize uh, test cases by combining the various test design techniques together to test what you want to test. Um, another question that, of course, would come up is, are these techniques exclusive of techniques like exploratory testing and white box testing? Uh, no, definitely not. Um, you know, again, the point of knowing fundamentals, whatever those fundamentals are, whether they're black box fundamentals or white box fundamentals or experience-based fundamentals, the point of knowing those fundamentals is to be able to combine them together to attack the testing problem from a variety of different angles. And uh, the more of these techniques you know, then the better off you are. It would be foolish to decide, well, this is the best technique in the world, and I'm just going to use this technique, because this would be like a carpenter who refused to use anything but a hammer because the hammer was his favorite tool. So you want to know how to blend these things together. You got to look for situations that call for one technique or the other, and have enabling characteristics. Uh, another question uh, via email. You talked about code coverage in a uh, webinar. A while back, do pairwise techniques relate to code coverage? Um, no, they really shouldn't. Um, in most cases, when you're using pairwise techniques, you're actually looking for situations where there's not supposed to be interaction, uh, which means if there's not supposed to be interaction, then there's no code specific to that pair, uh, which would then mean that there really shouldn't be any code path that could be identified by any white box technique that uh, you'd go down by testing the pair. So um, <clears throat> it's almost like anti-white box in the sense that you're, you're um, looking for code that's not supposed to be there. Uh, if it does happen to be there, then you've found some way in which some set of com a combination of conditions typically is not supposed to interact, but, but it is. So it's probably some sort of compound logic problem in an if statement somewhere or uh, race condition in terms of timing or some other situation where there's an unforeseen code path of some kind. So no, don't go looking for, uh, for code paths and a relationship between code paths and, uh, and this pairwise technique. You're not likely to find it. Okay, well, seeing no further questions, I will close this session out. Let me tell you a little bit more about the resources available through RBCS. Now, we run these free webinar sessions about once a month, so please check our website, www.rbcs-us.com, to sign up. Uh, if you would like a special webinar presentation for your company only of this webinar or on any other topic related to software testing, please contact us at info at rbcs-us.com or via our website. If you don't already receive our regular free newsletter, sign up at rbcs-us.com. By signing up, you'll get valuable discounts on consulting and training services along with a regular newsletter, uh, which includes a featured article on software testing and quality and news about what RBCS and its partners are up to lately. You can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash rbcs and also on Facebook at facebook.com slash pages slash rbcs dash inc. Uh, remember, check your email over the next day uh, or so, including your spam filter, because you might be the lucky winner of a free e-learning course from RBCS. You were registered 
to uh, win that for a random drawing uh, simply by attending this free event. Uh, you can check out our digital library, <clears throat> which is on the uh, rbcs-us.com uh, resources uh, tab. Look for the digital library that uh, comes when you pull down that tab. Uh, and that has recordings of these webinars, it has podcasts, and it has videos, all of which are available for free. You can subscribe to our podcast via iTunes at uh, by entering RBCS Podcast into the search string. You can see videos and recorded uh, webinars by subscribing to the RBCS channel on YouTube. Uh, we offer these free res resources as a service to the software testing community, no charge, because at RBCS, we are a not just for profit company. That concludes the webinar. I would like to thank everyone for joining us today, and I hope to see you on upcoming webinars next month.